Hi, everyone. Welcome back to season three of Hot Combs and Popcorn, the box office. For those who don't know, my name is Danielle. My name is Brianna. And my name is Bobby. And y'all already know one of the things that we love to do here on the box office is to review movies, give them ratings from one to five hot combs as zillennials. And today we are reviewing The Color Purple, the musical film adaptation of the original film. So this movie is written by Marcus Gardley. It's based on the Broadway musical which is by Brenda Russell, Ali Willis, and Stephen Bray, and the novel The Color Purple by Miss Alice Walker. So it was directed by Blitz Bazawule. Bazawule. It was produced by Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, Scott Sanders, and Quincy Jones. And it's starring a very star-studded cast. We got Miss Fantasia, Taraji P. Henson, Danielle Brooks, Coleman Domingo, Corey Hawkins, Gabrielle Wilson, a.k.a. Her, Halle Bailey, and Felicia Pearl Mpasi, along with a host of famous um, cameos and appearances. So this Color Purple had a released date of December 25th, 2023. It's rated PG-13, which we already have feelings on from the first one, but whatever. And it had a runtime of two hours and 20 minutes. So... Um, a quick synopsis, it's pretty much the same as the other one, except for it's a musical. So it's still Celie's 40 years of life. Um, we're seeing her struggles, um, the abuse that she encountered, the bigotry by the hands of her father, Mr., and basically all the men in her life. Um, and then we see her persevere and meet with her sister, who was in Africa, and they are reunited at the end. So, we already know what we're here to do. What are our thoughts on this adaptation of The Color Purple? Um, <clears throat> so, I saw this one when it came out on Christmas Day, you know, because for the culture. Right. And for some reason i remember like enjoying it way more when i originally saw it than now and i think that's because we just watched the original and the original was great i feel like this one was good in its own way but because the original one is so fresh in my mind i just can't even like really enjoy it the same way i i don't know like it was great though like the cast was stacked but I just could I couldn't go all the way for some reason. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, my background is this was my first time watching it. I had not watched it when it came out. I had not watched it when it first went on HBO Max. So this is my first time watching it, and I have not seen the play nor have I read the book. Um. So the only piece that I had to go off of was the original movie. Um, I liked that. I mean, this is just like an era that's happening in Hollywood of musicals being turned into movies um, that were originally a movie itself or a book or a movie that was based on a book, like a long lineage of, of, of things. Um, but I can agree with you, Bobby. I think being that the first one was truly rated R, this is very different. I would say it didn't really read as a musical adaptation until Fantasia came on stage and started doing stuff. But we'll get into that when we get into our highlights and lowlights. But um yeah, it was it had a it had a really I think I think it lived up to the color purple. I think it's just um might be a situation of me being not as informed because I'm assuming this is more so based on the play's adaptation of the book rather than the movie. And so that allowed us to see some things that we didn't see in the original movie and it took different precedences and stuff. And so I I do think though some things made more sense as um as a uh movie musical and then there were other parts that was like this doesn't really translate to film mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, I also basically did the same thing that Bobby did. Um, I saw it when it came out in theaters on Christmas Day. And I was, you know, I was very moved. Um, but that was my first time seeing The Color Purple at all. I had never seen the original. Um, and then watching it again after seeing the original movie, I was kind of like, mm, um, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the same way. Like you were saying, Bobby, it's very, the, the first one is heavy. And the, this one is kind of like the peppy younger sister. And I don't, I don't really know how I feel about that. Like it was still a good movie. I'm, I won't take that away from it. The singing was great, but there's something about it that was just a little, a little off to me. I don't know. I think, um, and I was kind of hinting to this a little bit in the first one, but I tried not to say anything. This, this one doesn't seem as heavy because there is music in it. And I think that that kind of, it kind of waters it down a little bit. And I don't know if that was the intention or not, but it doesn't, it kind of takes away from the seriousness a little bit. And like the dancers were dancing hard and I'm like, why y'all pop, lock and drop in when we are talking about serious topics? You know what I mean? Um, that, that was, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like it didn't translate on screen. Mm -hmm. I think, well, I don't know. Would you, did, what, where you want to go? I'm not going to get into. We let's go into the low light. Great choice. Okay, well I'll come back. <laughs> I'll just go back. <laughs> Bring it back. I'm say it. Um, <laughs> um, my first note on this says, "Why is this a musical?" And this is, and when I mean, "Why is this?" I mean, "Why is the movie a musical?" Um, because. I'll give a great example of how it doesn't translate to screen. I'm sure on stage when the workers and Harper were building the house, spectacular. Them doing it in the movie, strange, because it was an interlude, it wasn't a song, and they were just doing stuff. And it was like, I, I actually, it didn't really translate into a musical until the, um, until the song, the Hell No song. It didn't really translate into an actual like traditional musical to me, like a movie musical until then. And even then, didn't really care the fact that they started that off for all my life. I had to fight. I wasn't really a fan of that being the beginning of the song. I feel uh, what you're saying, Danielle. I think that it does take the seriousness away from it because it's such an emotionally charged seen in the original movie and probably even more in the book that is just like I, I think for something like this to be made today it had to be a little bit more digestible now I don't know what that says about society mm -hmm. but I mean I think there's some really good things they did and changed it was just like there were moments where I was just like what's happening like what why are we having this moment um also, I follow the girl, uh, Felicia, who plays the young Celie. Great actress. Love her. Follow her on Instagram. When she and Hallie were on the beach. Now, I didn't read the book, so I don't know if they were on a beach in the book. Um, if they no. were not, which I see Bobby is shaking her head, <laughs> it does not make sense like... that they are playing. I mean, if they were able to connect the Patty Cake song from the beginning to the end in the original movie without making it a musical, I feel like the musical had to really live up as to why is this happening? Some of it seemed like it was just purely translated for the sake of it being the original version of the musical. But also it was just like, why are we on the beach singing? Why are we doing this? Like, I, I agree with what you're saying, Daniel. I think it took away the seriousness of the underlining tone of the actual story because like we talked about last week if you haven't seen we talked about um bobby's point that the naacp wasn't happy that this was being made truly this remake was nothing to worry about it didn't do anything mister wasn't even 
a tiny bit as scary. And I've seen Coleman Domingo in plenty of roles. And honestly, he was the most scary in in um in Zola, if you've ever seen that. Because he Ooh. played like a drug dealer and his eyes were changing colors. He was a very scary man. Mr. They worked hard to humanize him in mm -hmm. this movie. And I don't know who question that was. I don't know if that was because they wanted it to seem less um, man-hating as the critics have called it, or if they wanted it to be more digestible in terms of not focusing on the abuse, but how you deal with it. I mean, yeah, he slapped her a couple of times. We don't love that. But like, he was nowhere near the same type of person. So it feels like even though it was made from a musical, there was some creative liberties that made it changed. I would just really love to hear how Alice, the writer of the book, feels about the movie. I'm sure mm -hmm. we can watch that somewhere on YouTube. But excuse me, there's been so many adaptations of her book that like, I would just love to know if she feels like it represents what she originally wrote. Yeah. Because even like you were talking about how Mr. was more digestible. Why did we have him and Celie being friends? When when that line came up, it's just like, oh, we can we can just be friends. I was like, excuse me? Hmm. Okay, now this is a question for Bobby. Because again, I didn't want I didn't read the book. Does that happen in the book? Um they don't become friends. Um they're cordial. Um, they had, I think they, maybe they had like a couple conversations, which okay. while reading the book irritated me greatly mm -hmm. because this man, okay. but at least it was in the book. vicinity. It is in the book, but they weren't like when he was patting her shoulder at that end banquet and all that stuff. I'm like, what is this? Why is he even here? Why are y'all associating with him? Not even like just Celie. Cause like, whatever, like this is like your relationship with him whatever but everyone that witnessed all of this me personally i couldn't forgive it no no so i have a lot of mixed feelings about the whole humanizing him thing most of which are negative but the fact i have mixed feelings on the fact like why they needed to do that so that audiences would be open and receptive mm -hmm. That does that does bother me. Part of what made the original movie and the book so good is that they did not shy away from any of the necessary, not necessary evils. Oh my God. Any of the evils that happened, like it was necessary to show all of it. Um, this movie definitely felt more PG-13. Like it, yeah, that feels fair. <laughs> it was definitely the rating it was. that it was. It definitely was nothing in there i mean i i think the the essay scene is always going to be something which i do i have that down but i'm not going to say how i have it down. I, I have to explain it because then i don't i don't need that clip but and you um, know what? <clears throat> sorry the thing is is like this everyone knows this story is not for children so why even make it pg-13 to begin with like if you're bringing your kids to this to the theater in 2023 to see the color purple like reevaluate yourself a little bit please right. um but they definitely could have made it rated r and like actually i mean i don't fucking know i mean i guess they could still humanize him at the end but but they didn't do that in the original like he he did his deed that he would he wanted to do to get that off his conscience and then that was it like they didn't but have he... that whole thing you know Here's what's so tricky about this movie is that it's not based off the original. Right. That's that's right. the thing. Like this movie is based off of the play and I've never seen the play either. And to know, I'm going to assume that in some way the play humanizes him because we go past the end of the, or we go more into depth of what happened to Celie after she left him. So I'm going to assume that stuff wasn't just kind of made up out of nowhere. I'm sure he wasn't tripping around in fields they were dying. But um, I would have to assume that the play humanized it. And maybe the play or you human humanized him and made it more tolerable. I, it makes me wonder if the play did that and the movie is just the result of that. Um, but it felt... 
the only way I can really explain it is it feels the same way that they are trying to water down Black history in other avenues of our lives. It feels the same that this movie did it the same way. And again, there's a lot of different things that could, you know, be because of that. We obviously know there's been a lot of stuff happening with police brutality and stuff. That could be a reason why they didn't want to make Mr. as mean and vicious as he originally was because of the times we live in. It's just so many factors to take into it. I think if I knew the factors of why they were doing stuff, it would make me have less critical thoughts about the choices that were made. But because it seemed like the original movie was more close to the original book, it just makes me wonder where in translation that got lost mm -hmm. when it comes to the emotion of it. Right. I wonder what the release date is for the play, like the stage play. Um, Cause I've never seen the- I don't know. Or the musical adaptation of the play uh but you know what let's talk to that director because i i have a it's lot like of 2015 <laughs> something like that i know it was running in 2015 because okay. it, it had a couple of people cynthia i don't know her that i don't want to say her name wrong but she yes mm -hmm. she was originally steely in some in the play version like there was another woman that was before her oh yes. fantasia was steely too i'm pretty sure and so the of, original yeah. broadway was in 2005 and oh. then they had they had like different tours from 2005 to 2017. Right. When was so they brought Fantasia Seely? Was she Seely in 2005? She no. is that when Jennifer Hudson was in it? Jennifer Hudson no. was in it. Jennifer yes. Hudson no, was in be. it when Jen no Jennifer Hudson was in it while um Cynthia was in it and um I I can't mm. think of who else that was 2015. But she was in it when it was like a mixture of them. I don't think they were all in it at the same time, especially with Fantasia playing Seeley. But mm -hmm. I definitely think that, I think from what I saw online, she was in it when Danielle Brooks was in it. Cynthia. But I'm not completely sure. Yeah, it's, it was Cynthia, no, Jennifer, uh, and Danielle Brooks. Yeah, Jennifer. I was, I'm pretty sure Jennifer was on it when mm -hmm. Danielle was in it. But I know that was like a, it brought it back and it ran a little bit. And then, it, and then it closed down. Dang, that must have been hey. real. I wish I saw it. I mean, shoot. Um, Michelle That's Williams. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like this is she better did. as a movie. I mean, as a musical than it is it has to be. a movie. Yeah. And the thing is, I, listen, I love a good musical. Okay. I'm a musical girl on and off the stage. But. And. Okay, so another thing. We were talking about how this one is like watered down because it's super serious. But as we were talking about this, I'm like trying to rack my brain for other musicals that did it ser like serious topics. And I started thinking about Les Mis. Les Mis was fantastic. It was just death and brutality the entire time. I don't know if y'all seen it. Okay. Um, I've seen the movie. Okay, yes. Not the play. I haven't seen the play either. I'm, I mean the movie. And mm -hmm. now I'm like... <laughs> Is there something more that the Color Purple crew could have done um, to make it more digestible? One or like, I guess more true to life, if that's even important. It's important to me as a viewer. I, it's not important to the crew or whatever, which is fine. But I really appreciated how in Les Mis, they sang live um, on set. And I feel like if the actors in the color purple were singing live and were able to act through the singing, it probably would have come off as more serious and not as like flippy, you know, whatever, especially cause a lot of the songs were like high energy. It's like, why am I having fun right now? Why am I dancing? Mm -hmm. You're talking about hell no. I'm like, yeah, girl, get it. But she means that hell no. <laughs> it yeah. just, I don't know. It, I feel, it felt like a missed opportunity. I think the one song that was sang live was I'm Here because I was listening to Fantasia sing it and it it looked and it sounded like she was singing it live. The rest of them, I don't think so. Um, and I agree. I think that kind of took, took away a little bit. But I also think for me, at least something that took away was the pacing of the of the film 
because I I don't know what it was, but I feel like we didn't really get to see a lot of Seely and and Nettie together. And the original film really focused on on that and their relationship. And it was like within the first 20 minutes, she already getting kicked out of his house. And I'm like, which is fine. Like, that's fine. We gotta we gotta move it along. But then we got a song every other scene. You know what I mean? So I don't I think the pacing was a little bit weird and like the the beginning sequence when we had that church um scene and they're all singing and dancing Tamla Man's there. I hey, go ahead. You brought something else up that I just wanted to ask. Yeah. I would love to know if the first lady was in the play. Because right. That will that will make my criticism go away. Um it would make my it would make my criticism go away about that role because it that's what I'm saying. It doesn't really translate into a movie mm-hmm. as well as it would have a play. That type of role makes sense in a play. That's just like um 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 great example. If they made Hamilton a movie. I don't know, the king, he probably wouldn't make sense in a movie. Mm -hmm. He makes sense in the play. If you've never seen Hamilton, the king of England, I believe, has his, it's like, you know, I'm not going to get us caught, but you know, he, he's the one that's in his own little world. He'd be like, da, 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 him. That makes sense in a play. His character would not make sense if Hamilton was a movie. No. Because of the way that it's paced. So that's the way I feel about that character. It doesn't make sense in a movie. I thought she had like an actual critical role when really I think the beef between the daughter and the father was stronger than in the original movie without a first lady there than it was in this movie. Mm -hmm. So like, I was just, honestly, I think for me personally, maybe because for the first 30 minutes, I was like, why is this a movie? I mean, why is this a musical? Um, I think for me, it actually felt like it was going too long. I was like, okay, where's Fantasia? Not because of anything particular, but it was just like so much, I hate to say this, so much time was wasted on songs that we could have been further in. Now, I do have low lights whenever you want to get into that. Cause we can get into, I do have low lights cause I do like things that they did better. Oh, you want to do that? Okay. Low lights or highlights? Okay. I'm sorry. Highlights. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I do like that the movie explained this movie explained what was happening a lot better than the first movie happened. Mm-hmm. Example. Them. Okay. I'm just gonna go down my list. Oh, I also I like this. This is my low light, but a highlight. Whoopi Goldberg being Celie's midwife, highlight. Yeah. The fact that Celie had a midwife, low light. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, I love <laughs> yeah, low light. Like, okay. It was a very yeah. it was a moment for the original fans. Yeah. But like didn't really make sense. No. At all. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um also I wrote Bitch is that Deion Cole. He really kind of killed his his role because like it took me 20 minutes to figure out who he was. I was like, I've seen this man before. Who is this man? And it was Wait, Deion who? Cole. Um yes. Mm-hmm. For, exactly. For who? It, exactly. Wait, Deion Cole you... is the father. He is the father. The dad. Oh, yes. that guy. Yes. I Deion. Know his name for some yes. reason. That's why I didn't I put him in, not... in the starring line. Mm-hmm. I, was like, I was like, she probably didn't even know he was in it. Because like... he, he, he wasn't funny, which Deion Cole is known for being a comedian. Right. And so, but they always say comedians play serious roles super, super easily. Like they do a really good job. Um, sure. I think the transaction of Steely to Mister was a lot more written out for us in this movie than it was in the original. I was talking to my mom about this, and she was like, "A lot of stuff in the original, you just had to infer." Mm. Mm. The mm-hmm. same thing. I watched the entire original. Did not put two and two together. The Mister helped Nettie get into the country. Not even close. Didn't oh, put two yeah. and two together. They kind of just it, slid over that. 
It kind of just like he opened a letter and then they were there. Did not put it together that he went to the office and helped her get her citizenship. <laughs> never, never put that together. Yeah. Like, I do like that. Yeah, like they explain stuff a lot better. Um, when Celie said, I want to be a loose woman, I said, LOL, me hides face. Um, yeah. I said, <laughs> um, the essay scene, uh, sexual assault, if you don't know what that means, was done way, I don't know how, I don't know if tasteful is the word, but it was done in a way that was PG to where kids wouldn't realize what just happened. Mm -hmm. And I guess it makes more sense for it to be like that in a PG-13 movie. It just, you didn't even see the actress. She probably had double that was up under Coleman Domingo. And I really appreciate that because that whole 14, 39 age gap wasn't it. Um... I laughed at the fact of who her was playing. I was like, wow, I'm screaming. <laughs> um, <laughs> Taraji did that. Danielle did that. Yeah. Fantasia did that. Felicia did that. Um, I said, I love that they added stuff that was from the book that wasn't in the first movie, like Miss Seeley's pants, um, like shop. Would mm -hmm. never know. Had no idea. Yeah. Also had no idea that that house and everything was left to her, like, you know, the girl in the movie was more probably, the original movie was more aged as appropriate as the book was, but this was a grown woman and she was like, nah, this is yours. This, she was like, this, this story is yours. Your real daddy left it to you, da, 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 da. which first movie never really explained when Celie found out that that wasn't her real daddy, which is probably why I thought that was her real daddy mm -hmm, <laughs> from the first movie. She never really, it was just that one line where she was like, my paw is not my paw kind of went over my head for the fact that we were two and a half hours in and mm -hmm. <laughs> it just feels like story elements that are important were explained better in this um and then the ending you know tried to get me into some tears it was very emotional okay um I think they missed a great opportunity being that this is film and you could put captions from not making her children speak their native language they could have did that. I think that would have been great because um, captions exist in movies. Taraji, again, can sing. Love that for her. It was giving very much Cookie Lions. And um, that's really all that I have. I said I love Andrew New Ellis, which is true. Yeah, it was it was a version of it. It was just, that's all I can really say. My highlight is that like, it was its own version which is why I'm trying not to compare it to the original that much because I know that it's not based on the actual movie. But mm -hmm. yeah, they had good stuff. I mean, the juke joint, oh, they was they were big getting it, okay? They okay. were. Now that yeah. makes sense for knocking and bucking, okay? Right. But Seeley thinking about this little baby and she walking through waterfalls. I was like, like girl, <laughs> the water, this is Georgia. <laughs> But we're in the country, like, in the middle of the country. In the country. Where's Waterfall from? Where? I was confusion. I was confusion. Why is there a beach? Like, it where was, are we? Like, literally, damn near a plantation vibe. Like, that's what it's giving. Where are the waterfalls in the middle of the country of Georgia? Where's the beach? I was like, are we in North Carolina? Like, where are we in Florida? Really? Florida. Was really given North Carolina, honestly. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe they moved them. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. I see the times also kind of moved around. It wasn't like particular to what it was we saw before. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, I do agree what you said, Bobby, last week that they, they did water down the scene between Felicia and Taraji P. Henson. Fantasia. Yeah, that's what I said um they did water that down i'm just not realizing they probably had stunt doubles in the movie theater but i think it would have been nice to see them actually represent what the book represented um yeah. at least in the same way that the original movie did just because again certain things translate better the lights shutting off when you're about to go in for a kiss in a musical makes sense that that makes sense, okay? But in a movie, that don't really, it don't, you don't need it. You don't need it. 
Yeah, and honestly, that is one of my biggest pet peeve when it comes to movie remakes of musicals, like, or not even musicals, plays in general. I personally really cannot stand when I'm watching a movie based on a play and it's obvious that this was a play first, like Fences, for example, same shit. Moonlight, not, okay? Moonlight did exactly what I would have preferred to see from a movie remake, like they completely revamped it. Fences, you know, were this is makes me mad. Fucking um, one night in Miami. I actually not a hundred percent sure if that was a play. I think it was first, but same thing. And this one, I don't know. The light, like what you just said, the light shutting off as he going for a kiss. It reads corny on a TV screen, but in an audience, like oh my god, like they're getting it in. It, I'm I'm just disappointed. I am. I was also disappointed that they didn't really get into Suge and Celie's like relationship. Like that whole scene in the original where she was like sitting on the bed and she's talking about why you always hide your smile. Like you don't, you don't smile. Like we didn't get to see that connection with them. And so then we just cut to we in the movie theater kissing. Like right. Like explain why they like each other. Right. Because like why like, are we kissing if we don't know why? Exactly. So also, what happened to Suge's husband? Where is he? They, he just I, disappeared. So <laughs> that's so funny you brought that up because I remember her saying his name in this new one. She was like Buster. And I said, Oh, Buster. Hmm. No, Who not Buster. Buster. Suge's husband. Yeah, what what wasn't his name Buster or something? That's that's no, but he was in the movie. He was played by John Baptiste. Right. Oh, okay. You're thinking okay. of actually. The, the same question for both of them. But John Petit's character, where did he, he didn't like, remember when she went home and she was with her dad and they reconciled whatever. Mm -hmm. He's not with her and then he's not with her at the at the circle dinner thing. So I'm like, again, I don't know what the book said. I know mm -hmm. the circle of Kumbaya didn't happen in the first movie. So I was right. highly confused as to why they were all around the giving tree. Okay. With Mr. Mm -hmm. With Mr. Mm -hmm. With, with Mr. Mr. I can't. But Buster, I think, because they said at one point when um, Sophia went to jail, like that really weighed heavy on him or something like that. He doesn't, he helps with the kids every now and then or something. I think he just, you know. Must have, I'm just going to put it on scheduling issues. You know, maybe that was it. <laughs> okay, I know we're in the highlights. I just want to share this one last low light before y'all add your highlights. Mm -hmm. I was very saddened about how that scene was worked out. With I wanted Sophia's eye to be fucked up like it was in the movie. I wanted Sophia's. Uh, I just. Uh, I was just. It made me so much. So much good stuff wasn't in the first movie than this was in, and like I said, a lot more reads in a play. But like I was just a little sad that um, you didn't get to see how much she was beaten down. Like you saw that she said, "Don't leave me," but you didn't get to see the fact that like literally this woman took her away from her children and went to go visit and this whole scene happened she took like you really don't get to see how why her progression goes from the way it does mm -hmm. it's like she get hit then she be quiet she don't say nothing and then she'd be at the dining room talking and it's just like but you don't get to see why she's sad you know because in the original movie she re they really broke her down okay miss diane could not see out one eye and they really took her like you could tell she wanted to say something but she didn't she couldn't it just, uh, it just, yeah. I, I don't. I have other thoughts, but I don't want them to be on camera, so I'm just gonna end it there. I just feel yeah. like, um, even though the first one was very long, I appreciate it because it's like they really got into the details of everything. This one is a little bit shorter, and it was just like. You miss it. You missing it though. Like you, I can't put my finger on it. I can, but you missing some stuff. And I don't know. I feel like if maybe I don't want to say maybe if it was longer because I don't. I don't want this musical Ooh, to be longer. That's such. A I rock gotta rock. say the 
the songs and I this was this was a highlight for me actually. The music, their singing was great. It was phenomenal. However, there was so much of it, like you said before, Bree. And I I just at some points I zoned out. I went to my phone. And mm. I hate to say that, but I'm like, why why are we breaking down every every scene? Like we don't we don't need to do that. Like I don't know. Yeah, it was a lot. And honestly, like how I see it, the song numbers and musicals are supposed to advance the plot, you know, advance the story, which is fair. A lot of the songs did, but some of them I dozed off. Sorry. I'm speaking my truth. I did. Um, and then I would wake up and the song is still going. I'm just like, yo, come on. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Some of them were a little slow. So um uh, I don't know the name of the song. Taraji and Fantasia song, like beautiful moment, you know, beautiful gowns. Let's so beat it up, girls. Like, let's just start on camera or something. Like, let's like something, anything. Because I am. I also, I also really like that they move sister to the end. Because I was yeah. like, where's the sister song? I thought it really was very cute to have moved it to the end once they brought her home to her apartment or to her house. And it's like, okay. That makes sense as to why they're bringing her home. Um, honestly, uh, you know, I, I truly feel, believe actors can only do so much with characters that are written for them um, mm -hmm. and already have such a dynamicness to it. I think her was just there as a singer. And I think that's really unfortunate because I think she is a, she could be a great actress. And I think she has acted and stuff. Mm -hmm. It just felt like her talents was kind of a waste in this because I think she was only singing in the in the one song in the yeah, one song like, the Taylor why? Shop song yeah and with, like and all of them were in it mm -hmm. yeah it it was just kind of like like yeah. damn that was a low light for me because honestly we love her okay mm -hmm. love her. I was excited when I saw that her name was on this movie. However, like I said in the original um, film, I was like, this character specifically is not needed in the film, period. I didn't think it was needed in the first one. In this one, she really was not needed because, A, she wasn't as annoying of a character as Squeak was in the original. I wanted her to be like, you know, she was high, high shrill. She was, you know very annoying and then this one she was kind of just there and she was kind of quiet and it wasn't working and then like you said it was wasted talent they had her sing like a singular line in one song and i'm like <laughs> why like what was yeah. the reason i don't know <laughs> yeah so um yeah that's what so that was that. That was that. Do we I have think, any more highlights or? Um, honestly, I barely took notes for some reason. Like, I started taking notes, but then as it went on, I, I don't know. For some reason, I just kind of fell off. But a lot of the highlights that um, you guys have mentioned, I feel like that's it for me as well. Um, like Whoopi, the midwife. I definitely wrote that down because I was like, wow, let me great. Um the cast stacked. Um I really love Corey Hawkins. Um I've been obsessed with him for a while, ever since Straight Outta Compton kind of came and changed my life. <laughs> and I went down a really intense Corey Hawkins rabbit hole. So I was very excited to see him in this movie as well. Um the entire cast and all the singing was phenomenal. Like, once again, you know, we come to the musicals to sing and dance. And that's exactly what they were doing, singing, dancing. Um, so that was great. Um, Sierra, I mean, she's cool. All oh, right. She had that one line as well, you know. <laughs> Sierra then, was there. Yes. Beautiful gowns. Beautiful gowns. Beautiful gowns. <laughs> the most beautiful gowns. The most Whoa. beautiful. 
I okay. There, there was two things. I one, I hope anyone who showed their child this movie shows them the original, um, because we cannot, we cannot let our children think this is the color purple <laughs> they can't. respectfully. 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 Respect. No, seriously. Yeah. Like, just like if you like, show, I've never seen the, I've never seen the remake of Roots. But just like if you're gonna show your child that, show them the original. Like mm -hmm. we cannot have them coming into 2024 thinking this was how the like, because then they're gonna be like, what was y'all talking about? Da, da, da. I mean, uh, <sighs> granted, I said last time, I don't think kids should watch the original like as a child age. Mm -hmm. I don't think they should. I still stand by that, but I just hope that the parents eventually show them the actual one. Um, I truly, if I have to say, I feel like this movie was made for those who watched the movie when it first came out and those who were a part of the production in some type of way, whether it was the musical, whether it was the um, the original movie, it just, it felt like, you know how like there are projects that people hop on because it's the project to have under your name, like you were a part of it. That's how this feels. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't really feel like it was made with the intention to bring a new story to light. It came as a, oh, we want to make it. Why not make it a movie? Okay, we can get this person. She did great in the oh. movie. We'll go get this person. Oh, we love him. This person, great. Her, she can sing that one song. Mm -hmm. Hallie, she up there. Okay, we do this. Like, and I know this was filmed, like, right when COVID happened, like, in 2021 or something like that. So... It's like, it feels more like a family reunion for the people that's in it than a movie that I'm watching. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I feel like... Oh, so, go ahead. Oh. I was just going to say, and why would you turn on the color purple? No one would ever say no, so that's it. I feel like that... No one would ever say no to a remake. No, because why wouldn't you? But that's also a problem with, like, just lumping people together because then it's like you got too many like things going on and now you it's kind of like is it cohesive mm -hmm. you know what I mean um mm -hmm. I will say I did appreciate okay appreciate it's a strong word Sierra sweetie um I appreciated her being in it because they actually had a older version of Nettie's character, which was one of my lowlights about the, the original, was that they just had it be the same person. Didn't understand that. I do like that they had an older Nettie. And I will leave it at that. Mm -hmm. You know? Lovely. Thank she you. served her purpose, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I have any other, like, significant highlights. Oh, you know what? I do. I like the theatrics of it all, like the the uh, the sweeping, um, like establishing shots. You know, all all the landscape around us, the beach, the cut, the beach. You know, pretty colors, beautiful gowns, beautiful gowns, and the beautiful gown, like. I, I, beautiful gowns beautiful gowns beautiful pants beautiful gowns to all of the crew members you know to all of the department heads mm -hmm. good job you know oh yeah like, i mean the cinematography great. the props the yeah the outfit like don't get me wrong it, it does not feel like this wasn't made and hard work on this was worked on like you can you can tell this was even the movie that the crew who like grew up with the color purple and stuff and you know, within the culture, you know, they mm -hmm. had that on a resume, worked on the color purple, you know, like mm -hmm. it brings something to everyone who's involved, especially with Oprah Winfrey being the head of it. I'm more than sure the entire movie, if not majority 99% was filmed at Tyler Perry Studios. So it definitely is a, it's a movie that. that everyone wants to have their credit under. And yeah, go ahead and fact yeah. check me on I that. I need to know. I really don't know. If you're right, um, I'm going to agree. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be considering almost all the content filmed on OWN Network is on <laughs> Tyler Perry's lot. Literally, his giant like mansion has different rooms and stuff. Masterpiece of a set building. But um, yeah, I mean, it just... I'm glad it did what it needed to do for the people that was involved. 
I mm-hmm. feel like as someone who did not watch it during Christmas time, I have a very different look at it because I watched it without the hype being around it. And that's really what I wanted to do. Watch it without the hype being around it. Because when you have all these gorgeous people and stars and doing all this and, and Oprah handing out purple tail flowers and it being a thing, like <laughs> it makes you ready. It makes you be like, oh, this has to be beautiful. This has to be the most yeah. beautiful gown I've ever seen. You know, this has <laughs> to be great. And then you watch it and you aren't really able to give an opinion because everyone on social media is still raving and loving it and da 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 da. When you mm. watch it a couple of months out, makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of feels like, um, you know, a lot of people feel, um, you know, neutral or I guess nonchalant about a lot of remakes. And this is one where it's just like, yeah, it was good, but what else like mm-hmm. you know the new lion king movie that we were talking about before um it's like okay sure um we wasn't talking about it on camera but we weren't yeah not we on camera <laughs> before we started <laughs> even like you know, coming to it. america yes. you know or like yeah i don't know the, the the new good times remake that they did on netflix like people are just like oh okay <laughs> i'm tired like which we will not we will not even talk. We will not get onto that. No, nope. I don't, I'm not. bad that I even brought it up. But you know what? Well, no, never mind. Nope. I'm not going to say nothing. On anyway. Mm-mm. So, Mm-mm. yeah, that's really all I have. So, okay. Well, um, do we have any other final thoughts? I have my rating. Okay, go ahead. Oh, sure. What are, What are our final ratings for the Color Purple remake? Color Purple. The musical, the the musical based on the book, based on the book, based on the movie, based on that, um, it's going to get a three point five stars out of me. Um, I think watching it independently, outside of watching any other color purple content, holds up. I think watching it and then also knowing the play or seeing the play or seeing the original movie or read the book it may taint your experience of watching it, which is why I really don't recommend if you read a book, watching the series and seeing it, you have to realize that's a completely separate project because it's not going to live up to your expectations. Um, I have no idea whose expectations this is supposed to live up to. So considering I did not watch The Color Purple until like two weeks ago, like the original, I had no expectations for the remake when it came out in December because I didn't know what the first one was about. All I knew was the memes um, as someone who went from watching the first one to this one and not seeing the musical and not seeing the book or read the book. Um, I think that it is going to be a 3.5 because unfortunately it is compared, it's going to be compared to the original movie. And if I have to just strictly compare it to the original movie, it's really a three. But yeah, if I watched it, and maybe even seeing the musical, I think it would be a 0.5 more. So that's why I'm adding the 0.5 because there's so many details and things that I don't have at my exposure because I didn't see it that, you know, maybe that would be something that would help me digest this better if I saw the play or if I read the script or it's something of that, the screenplay. But I didn't. So it's it's going to be a three. Honestly, it might even be a 3.25. I don't know. It's between 3.5 and 3. Three, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. A range, a scale. Bobby? A scale. I feel like that's fair. Um, you know, this may be our shortest episode yet. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um my original rating for Letterboxd when I saw it, four out of five hot combs. But I'm now giving it a three point five. Um, which I feel like is fair. Like three, three and a half to me is like what, like a B plus? That's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, shoot, I'm happy with a B plus. <laughs> it's not like it's not a C plus. It's like a high C. Oh, um, low yeah, Four out of five is eighty percent. Yeah, it's oh. um, it's about it's, right. it's a very it's a high a low B high C. Um, mm-hmm. you pass. You pass. Um, C's get degrees. And C's get degrees. C's get degrees. And not even you don't pass with flying colors. 
but you know you're there you're with the girls you get the degree GPA don't matter once you it leave don't college matter. unless you're going into like a reputable field so right um so yeah it, I um I'm gonna give it a three and a half because the the cast was amazing acting on point I feel like everyone really showed up to do their jobs um like my issue is not even with like the movie like the production of the movie it's just like all the stuff that was left out the stuff that felt um minute you know but everyone else they really they came to play so mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna give it a three out of five um i feel like you know when i first saw it in theaters on christmas day which why it came out on christmas i know the original came out in december as well but christmas day is um, anyways, I, I was like, this is, this was beautiful. Tears were shed. Um, and now I hate as that. I am here months later, rewatching it after seeing the original, it's like, it's like when you get a piece of cheesecake from the grocery store and then you find out that you could go to the cheesecake factory and get some cheesecake. Uh, damn. It's just like you can't believe you cried. You just simply can't believe you cried. Exactly. So I feel like now knowing what the original was like and seeing the the remake that's based on the film, that's based on the this, the, the I just feel like it's not it didn't live up to what I thought it was gonna be. Again, the actors, they acted, you know, they acted down, the singing was great. I feel like some parts of it could have been changed or did not need to be. They wasted my girl, her talent on this movie. I hate to say, um, but you know, everyone did, they did what they needed to do for this film. I don't think acting wise, singing wise, they could have changed anything or like, you know, it wasn't their performance. That was really the issue for me. It was more so just the whole production of it um so yeah i'm gonna have to give it a three out of five um mm -hmm. any other final thoughts questions concerns no okay well <laughs> this has been oh, another episode of hot tones of popcorn thank you so much for listening and watching again my name is danielle my name is brie and my name is Bobby. If you haven't done so already, please follow and subscribe to us on both YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Throw us a like, share the episode, leave a comment. Let us know, have you seen the Color Purple original? Have you seen the musical? Have you seen this one? Have you read the book? Um, what are your thoughts on all of them? You know, at this point, just let us know everything. Um, and if you have any suggestions for a movie that you want us to see, let us know in our DMs or in the comments below. And as y'all know, the street lights, they they coming on pretty soon. We we wrapped up a little early, but they're about to come on. So we gotta go. We'll see you the next same time, same place later. Bye, y'all. Bye.